morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Western Utility Commission September 9th, 2021 meeting. I will call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes for last month's meeting on August the 12th. Everybody should have a copy of the packet. Uh, anybody have any comments, questions, corrections, solutions? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. We need further discussion. All in favor? Uh, uh, all opposed? All right, minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is the August safety report. We've got Mr. Sims. Good morning, all. Good morning. Okay. Numbers. For 13 days since the last affordable, we're still doing good on our lost time. We're 687 days currently. We had one injury in August. Uh, it was heat related, later recordable with uh, some IV fluids situation. Uh, our year to date injuries are two. Uh, great. You know, last month we were at like a 2.3 with one injury. The second injury brings us up to a 4.1. And then our incident rate's gone down just a little bit. Current at 3.9 with the additional 3,360 hours. Our August training, monthly safety topic was Title Seven Common Accident Causes. Um, but you know, accident, accidents can occur for many reasons, but uh, unsafe acts cause four times as many accidents and injuries as unsafe conditions. And finding those root causes, there, there's a few things, these seven things you can kind of consider for underlying root cause there. And that would be taking shortcuts, being overconfident, starting a task with incomplete instructions, for housekeeping, ignoring safety procedures, you know, our mental distractions from our work, be it work-related or home-related, and then a failure to pre-plan the work. And then kind of, have you been guilty of any of these? And if so, you may not have been injured, but the next time, why not be so lucky? Uh, Got one thing to say. We're working on uh, a safety manual, just a, a basic safety manual for all the employees to fall under, and then they'll have their, their specialized programs depending on what kind of work they're doing. Then we'll, you know, go on with that. Uh, probably talking about maybe next month we'll bring that to you because we're going to be going to formally adopt it. Uh, other than that, that's all I've got. Any questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is personnel updates. All right. Uh, for the month of August, we had uh, two resignations. One was in admin, was involuntary. And we had a one in our sewer treatment plant that was voluntary. That was due to health reasons uh, on the sewer treatment plant. Hated to see him go. Uh, one of our employees that had came over when we took over the sewer treatment plant over the years has had some recent health issues, and the doctors advised him that he best that he went ahead and retired. So, but again, his name is Tyrese uh, Rolf. And I hate to see him go, but he decided to go ahead and retire. He was in what? Uh, Sewer treatment plant. STP. STP down here at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's right here. No, under number of resignations. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, no, no, I, 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 I look here. Down. That's my fault too. <laughs> So, but, and then uh, we are currently looking for an accountant in the admin department for the utility side. 
Uh, just to give you other updates on personnel, uh, we, the, as y'all know, we are working within the AMPA group on a salary survey. The numbers have the Johansson group is who's performing the salary survey for the AMPA group. The numbers have been received by general counsel and we have a meeting next week where it will be we will be reviewing all those numbers along with the HR directors with those uh, specific cities uh, whoever the rep the HR representative from those cities would be so uh, from there we'll be bringing that hopefully also next month the all as a report on where that salary survey uh, the numbers where we compare them Any questions? <coughs> A lot of openings. Are you hiring for all those openings? Yes, we are. What's the average pay of what we found? Pretty much all started. I would say a groundsman that's fourteen fifty. That's fourteen fifty. Uh, the office, all the others, I would say, are at fourteen starting. Uh, yeah, I'd say most of those are at fourteen dollars on average, which is the minimum wage. And I, I don't know this, but I think that's what I think I'm going to see from the salary survey. Yeah, I don't know that. That's a that's a Todd Peterson. <laughs> Thought. Anything else? Do you think that the uh, federal government dropping back on the weekly? I don't know. Stipend. I can't answer that. I thought Arkansas had already done that several. Exactly, and I haven't seen anything change, <laughs> so I don't know. Where do we put our advertisements? It's typically on our social media page, uh, and are just posted right here on the local board. You know, uh, that's about it. The biggest thing is social media. Facebook, putting it out there, trying to get it through that, or our web page. It's on the web page, the city web page. Does the city still have the two E? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do we put it on there? We used to, but we, I used to get stuff from Miss Coleman, but I don't anymore. Okay. That'd be a good place. Yeah. Put it. I, I don't get it, but. Right, and I hate to say this, I, I, I don't think it's younger people Watch. watching that TV channel. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it that way. Maybe <laughs> some grandmothers will tell their grandsons. Maybe. That, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my folks, uh, have, uh, you know, I go here in West Memphis, the local church, I have a lot of those ladies that come up to me a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that Say, I watched the show. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Alrighty. That's all I got for that. Okay. Next item is bond issuance. All right. As y'all are aware, y'all had previously been, uh, we had come in and we had talked and y'all gave approval to do the $30 million for uh, construction for sewer and water projects. We went through, we, as part of the bond issuance, because it was more than $10 million, uh, we had to get a rating. And in your packet, you had, s &P went through and did a bond rating or a rating, I don't think it's a bond rating, but a rating for us. And as you can see, it was triple B plus, okay? 
uh, investment grade, but it's the bottom of investment grade. And if you look through some of the things that uh, kind of cause that to be at that level, uh, the $1.6 million that we give uh, to the city uh, in payment of lieu of taxes is passed by ordinance, that is the last thing, but the, uh, the bond rating company would not accept that. They still considered that money as considered as operating expenses, so they kept that money in there. Even though there is an ordinance that says, we're gonna pay our bond issue first, and then we'll come back and pay the payment of Lua taxes if we have the money. Uh, the other th the three things that kind of pointed out as our weaknesses is one of them is they're aware of the coal plants that are retiring in 2028 and 2030 and not having that long-term plan set out of what we're going to do once that occurs was an issue. The other one is the long-term financial planning. We do not currently have that set up, so that's something we can look at and start also doing. And the other one was, even though our rates are 15% below the Arkansas average, they still felt because of the economic status of our cities and our citizens make up, they felt that it would be very difficult if they, we had to raise rates that it would be very hard to do so based on our the economic uh, status of our community. So uh, one of the things that they, and I think that goes into, and, that, and Susan might be able to talk about this more, is they're starting to look at what they call ESGs, environmental social governances, which looks at not only how well your company is doing, but also your surrounding community, also economics. So, and I think that it's, that's coming up for companies as well, and corporations, so that's some of the things that uh, hurt us in that. Uh, Michael McBride took some uh, steps though to address that and actually went out and bought insurance and had somebody back us that has a double A rating, okay, to help keep the interest rate low. So, and plus with the market where it was, we were able to get a very good interest rate. You can see, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's on, thank you. Page five, the true interest rate cost down at the bottom of 2.54%, okay? Still an excellent interest rate. If you all remember, we were originally talking about having to have a uh, principal and interest payment of 1.6 million. We were able to come in where it looks like we're gonna be in about the 1.45 per year on average, okay? So still got a very good interest rate. Uh, the bonds, he said, sold very well. There was a lot of interest. Uh, within the bond market at that time with all these bonds. So I think it's a success. You can see the timeline. Uh, the bonds have been sold and that it was all approved last Thursday by city council. Okay, they went ahead and uh, approved everything in the mayor signed. Uh, but we have to wait a little bit and finish getting everything done. Uh, and closing date is October 12th. That's when we'll receive the money. I think I just told you everything I know about selling the bonds. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? Do we still have our other bonds? Those got cleared a few years back. Yes. 
this will be our only bond. And as you can see, our first payment, if you can see the first payment, it is not actually till next year, June 1st of 2022. The first coupon, I think it's an all interest. Yeah, you're right, but it, it's on the oh, it's on page two. Yeah. You're right. It's not on the. It's not on the on the schedule, but it's on the on the transaction overview page. I'll ask him about that. And, Uri, and I, I remember that number because he told me that number verbally. I'll follow back up on that yeah, and make sure. I, if you make an interest payment, then it's going to change everything. I agree. Okay. I'll follow up with him and get back with y'all on that. Do you need a motion on that? No, it's done. This is just for y'all's knowledge. It's something we, you know, y'all had previously approved, and I want to let y'all know where it is because they did get sold last week. Just letting y'all know that we now, or on as of October 12th, we'll have $30 million we'll have to pay back. We'll start, we'll be fixing a lot of stuff, but we got to pay it back. Is our sewage costs still coming at 30 million? Uh, you're, you're talking about our cost? Yeah. Yes. It is still uh, it is still around that, I hope. <laughs> Let me just say this. Get it done quickly. <laughs> well, actually, here, I just since you bring that up, we had a the force main that was going from pump station three and four that feeds the areas between like from Walmart all the way down to Barton and from Clement to um, about Avalon, maybe Rich to Avalon, that whole area through there, we we're going to rerun that force main so where it, it took it off. Well, we were opening bids uh, this past week and we're going to have them presented to council last week and they were ordered for, for this meeting. There's been a shortage on resin for making plastic pipe. And the cost we were seeing was going to double, if not cause it to be two and a half times what we originally projected. So we pulled the project at this time and we're going to readdress it first of next year because you're talking about a two million dollar project costing around four million. And it, again, it's a shortage of resin with making the pipe. What their thought is, is hopefully through the winter months when all construction stops, they'll be able to catch back up on making of the pipe. Supposedly there is a delay on making of the pipe and when they people heard there was a shortage of pipe everybody went out and bought all the pipe so that issue in that area which I thought was going to get completed this year we're going to delay and try to rebid it next year because again we need to uh, I, I, I want to get things fixed as quickly as possible, but we also need to do it as financially as possible, I think. And you're talking an extra two million dollars would have hurt our <laughs> budget. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Okay. It was All right. critical, so you do it. Yeah. And again, I, we're, I'm, it's just not us seeing, looking at this. Again, as y'all know, Tim Burke, and he's going to come next week and give an overview of where everything is with this whole, our whole uh, corrective action plan, okay? Next week? Uh, next month, next month, sorry. Next month. 
I wanted him here this month, but he had other. Yeah. Anything else on bond issuance and that? You've got. It. That's all I got. All right. Thank you. Right, next item is the AMI update. I'm going to let Ward talk on this one. <laughs> it's easy. No, there's not actually. Okay. So the AMI is the uh, metering, electric metering project that we've been working on for a couple years where the meters will talk to us. And by extension, future extension, the water meters will talk to electric meters, then will talk back to us. So we don't go out and have to do meter reading. We do, we, we do cutoffs from here. Don't have to get in the backyards and worry about dogs and all those other stressors when we do cutoffs, and then when people can pay, we can turn them right back on immediately. So the customer service will be greatly improved. We we uh, we we selected the apparent low bidder that met uh, qualifications, and we've been going through uh, contract documents for almost a year. There's about eight different contracts subcontracts that all roll into the master contract and we we hope we're doing our last contract review today internally and we'll push our comments on to our, our uh, contractor I mean our, our consultant who's been helping to coordinate this and we'll be talking with our low bidder hopefully next week and, and we'll get things wrapped up and be able to report next month that we've got the contract uh, where we want it and can move forward with that. So I think um, uh, Entergy has already done something like this. You may have heard about this in the county or in Marion, and that, that's, you know, that's the kind of logic we're, we're trying to get done. So um, we've been working on this for two and a half years, so getting close. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Do you have a key take for implementation? Well, once we get it signed off, we're, we're going to be uh, hurry up every chance we get. Yes, sir. We'll hopefully by this time next year we'll have a lot of it done. We'll, we'll have the, we start off with a pilot program to smooth out all the bugs, sure. and um, we'll do a test program with the water meters but by next year at this time. We're, we'll help to have it. So, we got to start on section of the city and work our way, or we're still working on that. Okay. Don't have a roll-out plan. Not, 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 no, sir, not yet. Thank you. After the ink dries, we'll have that. We'll be back with that. Yes. Uh, again, main thing is just going to let you know we are real close to signing documents. Once we sign these documents, then get pre, pre approval last time based on that initial 2.5. Once we sign documents, we start the pilot project. If the pilot project is successful, then we start the implementation of the full blown project. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Next item we have on the agenda is recognizing employee of the year for utility. Uh, what I want to talk, and this is just something the city actually has had a thing where. The personnel committee, they did it in 2019, and I probably, with everything going on, it got pushed back and they recognized that person late. And then they asked for employee of the year for 2020, the city did. So as a utility, since I have such a huge, we have such a huge number of people, what I asked is I passed out every employee, non-supervisor, non not myself award, we're not on the list. We asked you, every employee, who do you feel is the employee of the year for the utilities? Put three down, okay? Put three names down. And then once I got every employee's input from that list, and then me, I voted, Ward voted, every person voted, but again, me, Ward, and the other supervisors not on that. It came down where uh, we tallied it up and 
we rec we had the most votes, okay, for amongst everybody, okay, myself, Brett, Danielle, and Tina tallied those votes up. So what I wanted to do, since what's happening is that one person is supposed to be turned into the personnel department, which met yesterday, and they're going to vote who is city employee of the year. Okay, I wanted to recognize the person who got the most and the second most votes for the utilities. Okay, uh, just because again we're a very large department, you know, others might have just one or two people, but I wanted to recognize those people personally. Uh, so I need Michael Lamb and Ron Borelli to come up front. <laughs> is Ron Morelli. He became an employee February 3rd of 2017. Uh, he works as a senior mechanic. He's been in that position since he came. He came from, to us from uh, the rail yard and Ron received the second most votes from all our utility employees. And I can tell you, Ron is always willing to help any of our employees. He does an excellent job. I mean, I think it's a great blessing to that we got him from the rail yard. And I can tell you, I'm pleased that he's with us. And I know there's good things for him in the future here also at the utilities. But I wanted to recognize Ron as he was our runner up. So just to kind of, you know, and again, he's in a very small department, but a lot of people use mechanics. As I told you all before, the fire department comes over and uses the mechanics over here, and then the parks department, I saw a parks truck over there yesterday. So he does help multiple departments within the city. And again, I know I heard a story about he came up and helped do something in the office one day, also picking on a lock or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so again, uh, again, just recognize that his hard work and everything he does for us just just a little something from us for you and then also a certificate and i want to say thank you for what you do thank you i don't think i have to introduce this guy <laughs> this guy has been with us since april 16th of 1992 so next year will be 30 years he started out in the water department as a laborer has the, I can tell you, he's not the manager, but he runs the water department. <laughs> and I can tell you, without this guy, I would, I'd struggle because anytime I need something, all I have to do is say, Mike, will you go look at it? And when he comes back and says, Todd, this is what I found, I can take it because I know it came from Mike. And I think that everybody in the city, there's a bunch of city employees that feel the same way. That say, I say, well, Mike went and looked at it. Okay, Mike went. And I can tell you, of our votes, he received, and again, this is a multiple departments, the electric department, the office, the sewer treatment plant, of those people he received, 50% 50, 50 of the people from the city put his name down. And I think that's just a testament of everybody knows what he does. And I can tell you, a bunch of us, when he goes on vacation, it's like, dang, Mike ain't here. Dang, Mike ain't here. Get a little nervous. Right? You get a little nervous yeah. because Mike ain't here. You know, so you know. Again, Mike, I appreciate everything you do for us, and I hope keep you a bunch of years. Thank you for everything you do. And he again will be put in the pool for city of the employee. And but again, as the city, West Memphis Utilities, I wanted to recognize these two guys for what they do for us and. Just to let you know that y'all's hard work is not going on for seen by everybody else for the utilities. Thank you for what y'all did. He wants to get a picture. A picture for the Mask, go mask. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to go there.
Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, um, thanks, Bill. All right. All right, everyone. Next item on the agenda How does the utility benefit the citizens of West Memphis? Sorry. I didn't know that slide was here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been right. staying there for the picture. I know. All right. Uh, again, something I just started a few months ago just to tell y'all how we do. And y'all know this one already. But the electric department hangs up and takes down the banners uh, for A and P and uh, and Main Street for the 4th of July, the banners on Broadway, the lighting on Missouri, the lighting on, in or the banners on Ingram, our electric department with the their equipment that's able, they are the guys that for 4th of July, Christmas banners, then going back to the normal banners, taking them down and putting them uh, up every year. And again, it, it, that's again something where our labor helps other departments so where then they don't incur other costs so I think that's a good thing it helps again just the importance of as I've said previously public power we're here to help serve our owners of this community and save money any way we can that's all I have on that well and one thing to add to that I've noticed not only have they done the banners holiday lighting, but also the street lights have had to be repaired, repaired or some of them replaced a few times. And, and we take care of all the logos. Those. The logos on the side, they're out there doing that. And, and that's part of it as well. Yeah, we do. We do Thank you for that. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Bye-bye. That's the last item we have on the schedule agenda. Is there anything else anyone would like to bring before us today? else how, how are we doing with uh with COVID, uh as far as uh, uh the utility we've had <coughs> as y'all seen very recently I, I, i'm not sure about vaccinations and what percentage of our personnel have been uh, vaccinated but i can't tell you we've actually had three cases where people have been having been quarantine so far uh, and that is it. Yeah, three out of our total that's total that have been quarantined. Uh, actually, two of them broke to work together, so they both got it. And then we've had one recently in the office that had to be quarantined. Those people have went. And the people who were within that six feet for 15 minutes or longer around that time have went and gotten tested. Uh, but again. Luckily, those people voluntarily told us that everybody in that department had been vaccinated. So based on CDC guidelines, they're back at work, but we're waiting on the results of those. But it, 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 so far, it's going good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that information. Thank mm -hmm. you.